to limit myself. So I'm really excited to chat about um, how data on, on uh, how science is made can really make better science. Um, I think many people have talked about the importance of science as an economic driver, uh, scientific discovery and technological uh, invention that flows from it. Um, but you know, the data deluge uh, uh, of scientific papers poses serious challenges for scientific certainty and for scientific search. Uh, however, you know, if we spend um, time and effort uh, and using modern in, uh, uh, analytics to integrate that data, we can use these data sources as a scientific sensor array deployed across the scientific system. Um, what I'd like to spend time uh, thinking about today, many others have, have addressed these possibilities, is that there are typically two uh, projects that explore this. One is, uh, you know, domain scientists that really focus on the contents uh, the paper data. Uh, they're interested in the concepts, the claims, the phenomena, the tools that are explored. Alternatively, uh, one can look at the metadata that are associated with those uh, papers and which are increasingly required by publications uh, who are asking, for example, about contribution histories, authors, institutions, the roles that people play, the conferences and conversations that these are part of. And, um, and these two different projects between domain scientists and social scientists are largely separate. And I'm going to argue uh, today for the really dramatic importance of linking the data and exploding the boundary between these two projects to create really a science of science whose epistemic uh, value and test is creating better science and a better society. And, and that we um, can use those standards and demonstrate that value. So um, I want to just talk through that in, in three really short cases, or I will shortly describe them. Uh, one is how uh, diverse and disconnected communities can generate more robust scientific uh, certainty. Um, the second is how diverse and disconnected expeditions can generate novel collective discovery. And the third is how data can be used then to design diversity that, that pushes and goes beyond uh, the standard human limits. So the first is in the context of the replication crisis. If you put together data and metadata, as we did to build a kind of a high throughput strategy for conceptual replication. Uh, we did this in a few cases, drug gene uh, interactions, for example. We took roughly 100,000 um, claims that are made from the last uh, 20 years of research on the topic of drugs uh, interacting with disease-related genes, and we lined them up with um, a high-throughput, massively replicated uh, wet lab experiment uh, that reproduced each of these about 200 times to assess the degree to which aspects of the scientific community, the metadata, how it is that the science was produced, should influence our certainty about the likelihood and reproducibility of science in the future. We find that um, there is collective correction in science. So when there's more people who study and make a claim, then it's more likely for that claim to replicate in the future. But where this high centralization in science and high interdependence between the scientific communities, between the authors, between the references or expectations, between the methods that people are using, uh, we see dramatic decreases in the likelihood that those findings replicate. What's interesting then is we can turn that around as a Bayesian instrument to update uh, our scientific certainty. So for example, if we take into account the fact that these 100 claims are made by an overlapping mess of authors' uh, methods with the same expectations, looking for the same confirming findings, um, then we do much better at predicting the likelihood of replication going forward. Right. So we can use these as instruments, and we can use them to design science policies that actually produce better science, which produces better data, which will allow us to actually produce better certainty inside science to decide what findings we should build upon and those that we uh, can't or shouldn't. Turns out the same is true when you look at clinical trials. Uh, a big problem that most meta-analyses uh, take into account is over-dispersion. They're trying to correct for it. But it turns out if you look at these dependencies, you find that under-dispersion is likely a larger problem. So connected communities lead to weakened results, but the op opposite can be inferred if one takes this into account. The second fact of finding is just how robust facts are established across clusters and novel discoveries occur across fields. So we looked at the biological and physical sciences to analyze this. We built a bunch of big manifolds that kind of predict next year's papers, which we do uh, with reasonable certainty. And we find 
um, that the things that violate these certainties are the things that are the most likely uh, to uh, attract outsized attention in, the ter in terms of you know, large uh, citations, large scale awards um, across uh, the sciences. Um, but the thing that's really striking is if you look at the metadata combined with that, um, then uh, you find that it's not unusual people and not unusual teams that are most likely to produce these novel findings, these, these findings that are the least predictable under the most predictive model, uh, but they are the most novel expeditions where people from one part of science travel to another part of science and solve their problems. Um, so radical insight comes through these conversations with aliens. Just to demonstrate how you can actually use this to improve science, um, this was a paper in Nature, uh, summer of 2019, that showed how you can use AI tools that take into account just the text to make predictions about new materials that have relevant energy uh, related properties. If you throw, as we did, um, the authors and the distribution of institutions on top of this. So if you make this same AI algorithm, precisely the same one, um, aware of the inferences that are most likely cognitively to scientists, uh, and you, we, we do this by basically building random walks over the hypergraphs of papers comprising both discoverers and discoveries, um, immediately you get a 100% increase in precision of the prediction of those materials. So from 40 to 80, uh, from uh, you know 45 to well over 90. So, and we do the same for, for drugs, we can do the same. Actually, we get a 300% uh, increase in um, in our prediction of COVID relevant drugs uh, and vaccines, which is actually much, it's, it's larger even than algorithms, really deep algorithms that took into account every available protein, protein dependencies across many. So ignoring all that, but just taking into account the distribution of scientists, we can do better uh, by understanding and inferring, uh, by basically building AI to be sensitive to uh, the existence of the scientific community. And the way we do that is by basically um, predicting cognitively available inference. And uh, we can turn that around and, and dial the dial in the opposite direction uh, to um, propose the most alien uh, hypotheses, basically to create AI that is explicitly designed to complement rather than like target and replicate scientific, scientific discoveries that are already going to be made. And it turns out if we look at at ground truth simulations of properties like thermoelectricity or ferroelectricity or photovoltaic capacity, um, that we uh, that these unusual uh, predictions are just as likely to be true um, as those which are expected and usual as a function of uh, the distribution of scientists that explore them. Um, so that's all my time. I'll just say that uh, in closing, that you know. Uh, these findings suggest things for science policy, the importance of designing diversity to catalyze certainty in advance in science. Um, they also suggest the importance for really collapsing the distinction between better um, data about scientific content and better data about scientific metadata. Uh, and they give us direction for how to build uh, and actually design diversity to improve uh, our certainty and our search in science. Um, so thank you.